Welcome. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to create some buttons uh, so that we can have a little bit of a little bit more interaction between the user and the movie itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this scroll bar over here to make sure that I'm at the very top of my layers up here, which is my text layer. I'm going to right click my mouse and insert a new layer, which I'm going to title buttons. Good practice to place your buttons kind of at the top of your uh, layers here just makes it a little bit easier uh, when you're going through it and working on your movie. Uh, also kind of helps to ensure that your buttons actually work. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on, on frame one here and I'm going to start by drawing a button right here. Uh, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I don't know why I'm zoomed in so much but uh, I'm going to zoom out to probably what you're seeing here. And I'm going to draw me a button right here. Okay, I'm going to, again, I'm going to make sure that I'm on frame one of my buttons layer. I'm going to come over here to my tools panel, click on my oval tool. In my properties box, I'm going to turn off the stroke, which mine was already turned off. And I'm going to create a blue button. I'm going to hold down my shift key. Now you can draw a square button, oval button, whatever, whatever kind of button you want. I'm going to draw a round button right here. And now I need to convert this object that I've drawn to a, to a symbol. I'm going to click on my selection tool, select the circle that I've just drawn, come up here to my modify command on my menu bar, and I'm going to convert this to a symbol. And I'm just going to call this play. And I want to make sure that the type is a button and click OK. So you'll notice that the object changed a little bit. So now I need to go inside of that and, and kind of work on the, the button itself. So right here you'll notice that it says scene one. That's my movie. I'm going to double click my button that I've drawn. And you'll notice that I, I, the scene one is kind of faded. I now have my play button right here. So I'm, I'm kind of like inside the button itself is kind of the way I like to describe that. I'm going to zoom in so I can see my button a little better. And I'm going to put some text on here. So I'm going to come over here and get my text tool. <clears throat> uh, Times New Roman, 14 point. I'm going to change the font color to white. And I'm just going to click right here and I'm going to type in play. Get my selection tool, just kind of click and, and eyeball it there so that it's in the center. Okay, you'll notice that when I clicked on my button right here, a new timeline opened up. And I have four states within this timeline. I have an up, over, down, and hit. The up state just tells the tells you what your button is going to look like when your animation is playing. So just playing the movie or playing the animation, your button should look like this. Your overstate is what your button is going to look like when somebody actually moves your mouse, their mouse over your button. So for right now, I'm just going to copy what I have in the upstate to my overstate by inserting a keyframe. I'm just going to click outside here and I'm going to click on the background right here. And I'm going to change the color. Uh, I'm just going to make it something a little bit lighter. So now you can kind of see the difference between my up and over. The down state is what your, what is your button going to look like when someone actually clicks on the button itself. Uh, since that happens so quickly, I'm just going to insert a keyframe and copy what we have over and leave it at that. The hit state allows you to define the area of your button. If it happens to be an odd shape or something, you can actually define the area that someone can actually click on your button. So with that being said, I, I can go ahead and I can label my layer as play button if I want. Um, I can lock this so nothing gets changed anymore. And I'm going to come over here and click on scene one. This takes me back, back to my original movie. I'm just going to click outside here in this gray area just to deselect my button 
and I'm going to go ahead and create another button. Uh, but this time I'm going to change my, my color to red because I'm going to make this a stop button. So again, I'm going to hold down my shift key. I'm going to draw me a circle uh, that's roughly the same size as my play button that I made earlier. And I'm going to go through the same process. I'm going to get my selection tool. I'm going to select my button there. And I'm going to convert that to a symbol. And this one I'm just going to type in stop. Make sure that it says button, click OK, double click my button. Again, I'm going to add my text, which I'm going to make white. I'm going to zoom in so I can see it a little bit better. And in this one, I'm going to type in stop. Get my selection tool. Eyeball it so that it's roughly in the center. Copy this over by inserting a keyframe, deselect, select the background, change the color. Uh, we'll go there. And copy over to the down state by inserting a keyframe. Again, I can label this as stop button. Lock it so it doesn't get changed, and then go back to scene one. I'm going to zoom out, and there's my two buttons. Now, if I play my button, if I go up here to control and test the movie, you'll see that my buttons don't work, other than they do change colors like they're supposed to, but they don't work. The reason they don't work is because I haven't inserted my action script yet. So I'm just going to go come over here to frame one. I've got my two buttons selected and I'm going to, I'm going to go to actions. Right click my mouse, click on actions. Now I'm going to go to my classroom. Locate the button script. You're, you're probably better off actually downloading the script and then opening it up. I already actually had it there. Open it up. I'm going to select all of it and copy it. I'm over here to my uh, actions box in animate and I'm going to paste that. Now let's just kind of quickly go over what's happening here. Uh, stop BTN is what we're going to call our button. We, every button has to have like an instant name, uh, instance name. So we're going to call our stop underscore BTN. Uh, we're adding an event. It's a mouse event. Uh, we're, we're waiting for an event to happen when something clicks. On the mouse, when somebody clicks on the mouse, we want to go to a function called stop movie. So down here, we're going to define our stop movie, uh, our function. We start with function stop movie. It's a mouse event. And when somebody clicks on the mouse, we want the movie to stop. If you scroll down here, uh, we're going to do just the opposite with our start. Uh, we, we're going to name that button or the instance name start button going to start our movie. We create a function called start movie and in this case we want to play. So we've got to go get that fixed up right quick. So I'm going to come over here. I'm just going to deselect and I'm going to select my play button and you'll notice over here in the properties box it's looking for an instance name. So we're going to do start underscore btn because that's what we put in the script. I'm going to deselect, get my stop button and in the instance name, I'm going to put stop underscore btn. I'm going to click out of that. Uh, I'm going to save my file. So now when we run our movie, when I click on my stop button, 
it should stop the sun from moving. When I click on my play button, it should allow the movie to continue playing. So let's see if, if that happens. I'm going to come over here to control, test movie. Stop and play. So it does work. Uh, don't worry too much about the uh, sound that continues to play uh, when you stop the movie. Uh, right now what we did was we just wrote a basic script on how to stop the animation itself. Uh, it's a lot more complicated, a little more in-depth, probably above you know, what, we, what we need to learn in this course. Uh, because your sound gets loaded in a different part of, of memory in the computer. Uh, and there's some other things that you have to go in there and program in order to, to kind of clear that out and stop it. But uh, we're not going to worry too much about that. We're just looking at something really basic, uh, which is just to stop and play. So once you finish this, uh, you might want to demonstrate this to your instructor so he can get that checked off for you.